The escalating violence in Hong Kong is, of course, spelling deep trouble for its economy. How deep? You know, as Ivan said, the Hang Seng suffered one of its worst one-day drops since these protests began. You see it there, as Ivan was saying, down 2.6%. Earlier this month, it was confirmed that Hong Kong slipped into recession. The recession, the economy shrank 3 0.2% in the third quarter. Meanwhile, foreign companies say that the unrest is hurting business and its earnings. Last week, Disney warned that income in its Hong Kong theme park could fall 275 million in this fiscal year. And of course, money is still flying out of the city. Goldman Sachs estimates Hong Kong lost as much as $4 billion worth of capital to Singapore over the summer. Patrick Kovanek is here and he is the chief strategist at Silvercrest uh, Management. Thank you so much for being here. I, it's interesting to see the perspective on this because business investment has slipped so sharply now. We have to go back actually to just after the handover in 1997 to really see this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of problem in terms of investment in Hong Kong. And, and even then, I don't think there was as much nervousness when the handover actually took place. Um, you know, for somebody who's lived in Hong Kong, as, as I did for many years, it's really shocking, the pictures that you see, um, because this is supposed to be a safe place. This is supposed to be a peaceful place. And that's why people put their money, that's why people put billions and billions of dollars there and why it's a financial center is because, well, it's, it's exactly the opposite of the kind of pictures that we're seeing. I know, look at that, Patrick. And I'm so glad you brought that down to the personal because this does, uh, in, in fact, inform the financial investments, right? I mean, people say that the city isn't the same and they can't see it being the same ever again. And this is a uh, a conflict which has taken on a life of its own because, you know, the, Beijing doesn't want to, it, it wants to exert control over Hong Kong, but doesn't want to kill the goose that lays the golden eggs. The problem is, is that, um, you know, they, after these protests, after several months of protests, Beijing actually backed off and withdrew the extradition bill, which was the trigger for mm -hmm. all of this. Um, thinking that maybe this would diffuse a lot of the energy behind the protests. It hasn't because what we're seeing now is a total breakdown of confidence of trust between the police on the one hand who have orders to get this get these people off the streets and and the um, and a big chunk of the Hong Kong population which feels that the police have just run amok and they want accountability now it's not about the extradition bill it's it's about wanting accountability for how the police have have handled themselves over the last several months and I don't think it's very likely that that's going to happen. So what do you do if you're the Chinese leadership? And this is still the open question here. I mean, you know a lot about this. You've spent a lot of time, not just in Hong Kong, but in China as well, in terms of where the Chinese leadership would go from here. And here's the issue. It seems that they've lost confidence in the Hong Kong executive as well, obviously, to keep a handle on this. Well, they're backing her, um, and they're backing her hard line. So they haven't, you know, they haven't replaced her. If they truly lost confidence, they could boot her out and put somebody else in. Um, but, you know, it, it's a very difficult situation because, like I said, they I don't think they want to crack down um, in a way that would be even more overt. Uh, the international reaction is one thing, but also just the financial reaction. Um, you know, if, if money starts, we talked about that mm -hmm. money is flowing out to Singapore. Uh, that's a tiny amount compared to what could flow out if there was a real... Uh, crackdown that took place right. and then the Chinese would really have no choice but to put capital controls on there and then that would make Hong Kong no longer a functional financial center as it, as it was. So you, so you do kill the goose that lays the golden eggs if you pursue yep. that path. And I have to leave it there, although end of this conversation, not the end of the whole conversation. Again, uh, continue to watch uh, this ever, uh, you know, this ever developing situation on the streets of Hong Kong. Patrick, thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate it.